to it now. Son of a bitch. Okay, let me tell you what's going on here. Um, the customer brought this truck in to have this fender repaired. So I went ahead and fixed the fender. And before I even fixed anything, I always write out exactly what I need to do to the vehicle. Now, one of those ideas, or should I say uh, procedures, includes, if necessary, to blend the paint to match. I'm going to go ahead and explain something to you. I want you to listen real close. And I'm talking to the people out there that wreck their cars and they tell the body shop, I don't want you to blend. I want it to match perfect and I don't want, it to, I don't want any blending done. That's, that's a nice car. First of all, if blending is necessary for the paint to match, you have to blend. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a bumper cover, for instance. From the factory, the bumper covers actually are a shade difference. That's because of two factors. They're actually painted somewhere else. They're not painted in the same factory the car is or the same location inside the factory. And another thing is, it's plastic. Plastic does not paint like metal. It's different. So when you get a brand new car, or you see one driving down the road and the bumpers look different color, and you say, well, that sucks, that is factory original. When I replace a bumper cover on a car, I don't care which one it is or what color it is or anything else, I always blend into the fenders, always. Whether it's pearl paint or whether it's solid color paint, I don't care. Because I don't need to hear the customer bitch and complain that the bumper cover doesn't match this. So that's one example of paint not matching. The other example is, is when you purchase your paint, there's thousands of different brands of paint. Thousands. All the way from PPG to Exalta to Valspar to Sherwin-Williams to the cheapest bottom of the barrel junk you can buy. If you don't have a paint machine in your facility where you take the vehicle, in the facility that takes the vehicle, they don't have a paint machine, they are not going to be able to match it 100%. And even if they do have a paint machine, a mixing machine, it's not a guarantee that they are going to match it 100% perfect. Now there's a little machine, when you go to the paint stores, they got a machine and they, they praise this machine and glorify it to the hilt. It's a little computerized uh, machine, handheld machine that takes pictures of the paint. You put it in like three different spots and it'll take pictures of the paint. Even that will not perfectly match the color of your vehicle. If you get a factory pack, which is a pre-mixed pint of paint from the factory, I don't even know if they sell those anymore, PPG used to sell them, it was a factory pack, you order it and you go get it the next day or whatever, even that does not match flawlessly 100%. Now, you might get lucky and, and bring your vehicle to a shop and they'll only paint the fender because that's all you paid them for. And you might get lucky and it'll match. I'm not saying that every single paint job in the world on a car that's a collision job has to be blended. Now we're talking about blending paint here. We're talking about painting a fender and, and taping it off right here and not painting the door. And when you pull the paper off, it's two different colors. It takes a very good eye to even see that. Let me tell you the story about this vehicle, okay? Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. vehicle in 
and the whole thing, this whole section right here was completely crushed in. Here's a little example of what I had to do to it to make it look brand new. All right, how's everybody doing out there? This is Pete. We got a brand new Dodge truck here. What we're going to do, um, this actually got hit by a horse. Uh, the lady is a avid horse uh, owner. She's got 15 or 20 horses and a, a horse actually ran into her fender here. The whole dent is all the way down and it actually comes all the way out here is where it comes to and then right here. So I want to come over here and show you this. You can see that the damage is pretty hardcore. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a pry bar and we're going to see if we can stick it down in here, which that ain't even going to work. So you can see, using pry bars and, and all this other jazz, not going to work, people. We're going to have to go to a more extreme action of pulling this out to fix it properly. And what that is, is this tool right here. What we're looking at is a spot welder dent puller. This is a runoff of battery. Um, I've had this for probably 25 years. When I bought it, it was $1,800. I don't know how much they are now. Uh, the business that made this one is now out of business, but I'm sure that you can get online and still find these. So the first thing at hand is finding where we are actually going to use our puller. Now, I told you there was a small dent here, so we're going to go ahead. Let me go ahead. Now, when you use one of these type of pullers, you got to make sure that the tip is very clean. And if it's not, it won't work properly and you'll burn holes in the metal. And one more thing that we need on this is a ground. Now, just to let you know, you cannot use this machine on, metal, on aluminum. This is only made for metal. Now, what this is called, this is called our pry bar. It's got a leverage on it on the end here. This will fit inside this just like that. And then you can move this up and down. So we want to get a nice good place where we're going to get leverage. And then what we'll do is we will start pulling our dent. And you can see right there, look at that. We just pulled. We're going to be able to probably pull most of it out. You see that right there? We just pulled all that out. But we still got a situation over here now. Another problem with using one of these, you got to be real careful because it will, in this real thin metal, it will put holes in it. So you got to be real careful using this. And there you go, look at that. We got a little dent right here still, but we got to get out. That's okay, though. And then you're just going to go along just like this. Get it all pulled out. Out. <clears throat> so far, it's looking really nice. <laughs> some tin canning going on in this area so what I'm going to do I'm going to do a light pull right here and then I'll pull it up here which will stretch that metal out. that'll stretch the metal out um, to get this to stay the way we want it so we'll go ahead and continue to pull over here first get that ground on there And then we still got that, well, now that I pulled this section out, looky here, from pulling that dent out, is now fixing our situation here. So we got to get this, this crease out. Once I get that crease out, then this will all pop out.
All right, so now what we've done, we went ahead and did our process to pulling out the dent, and it is now ready to do our body work. So um, that concludes this lesson. Um, I would have preferred to replace the fender, uh, but these fenders are very, very expensive, and they're a real pain in the ass to remove and replace. So we went ahead and did it this way instead. Take it easy. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you one more way to fix something to do it right. So you just saw what the fender looked like, body work I had to do. I had to get this body line back here because it was flattened out. Now she claims that one of her horses rear-ended it and butted into it, backed into it, and crushed it in. Now, do you see this? Can you hear it? The metal on this brand new fender is like a tin can. It's very, very hard to fix brand new vehicle dents, especially the damage that was on this. I ended up having to paint the whole fender. So in my invoice, I stated in the notes, if blending is necessary, it will be a $145 charge. She quickly texted me back, and this is another thing I don't like about people, and I'm not doing any more work for anybody that wants to just text me. If you can't get on the fucking phone and call, and you can't get on the phone and talk, and you can't come in person and meet me in person and talk, then I don't want to do your car. Take it somewhere else. I am not a fucking texter. I don't talk through texting. And I am not texting you through a fucking job that I'm doing for you. I stated in the notes, if blending is necessary, it will be a $145 charge. So the customer comes back after I said that, and she says, I don't want anything blended. That's a brand new vehicle. And I said, well, okay, I'll do the best I can. I normally don't have to blend, but if I have to, I have to. Well, she never answered me back. I went ahead and just painted the fender only. That's all we painted on this. Just the fender. That's it. I took it outside, bam, guess what? The color's not the same. It's a shade off. She said she didn't want any blending. I get the car outside, and what do you think happens? As you're walking up to the vehicle and stepping away, this looks totally different than that. The color did not match at all. It looked like this was dirty white and this was bright clean white. So I had to pull the truck in last night at 7 o'clock last night. No, it was about 5.45. I went ahead and pulled it in. I prepped the door to go ahead and blend and clear. And then I taped it all off and painted it last night. And you can see now that the paint texture, the paint job, and everything else matches really, really nice. It all blends together now. It looks like it should. So I still got to detail this vehicle out to get it out of the shop. And what I charged on this was definitely not enough that, to pay for what I did to it. I ended up basically doing it for material money if that's what you want to say. Because when you have to do the job twice instead of once, because the customer is telling you how to do the job, you don't make a profit, you don't make no money, you don't do nothing. I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. 80% of all vehicles that go to a collision repair shop that are painted are blended. Are blended. Are blended. Blended. Blending paint is nothing wrong with doing that. The only problem with blending paint is the shop that you take it to. 
If you take it to some low ball shop down on the east side of town in a back dark alley that's made of dirt in somebody's garage, one car garage at home, and they blend the paint, you can guarantee you're going to get a shithole job. The preparation of the door that you're going to blend consists of a professionality of doing a quality job. That means from start to finish, the person that's blending should know what the fuck they're doing. Now, I believe that the customer didn't want me to blend because she was sketchy and afraid that I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I don't know. But what I did to this door, let me go ahead and show you. This product right here, and I'm not advertising for these people because there's 20 or 30 different brands of this, and it all does the same thing. It's called, this is scuff stuff. This is a surface prep specifically designed for blending paint to ensure 100% accuracy that the paint is going to stick and not come off. This is a blending agent that you use to clean the door off with with a gray Scotch-Brite, with a gray Scotch-Brite. Wherever you're gonna blend, you will take your 1500 on a soft block and block it. You will hand block that to approximately this area here. The rest of the vehicle, you will clean up that panel using this product right here, which is specifically designed for a blend job. For the paint to 100 accuracy, flawlessly percentage stick to that fucking door and not come off. So blending paint is a professional way that the shop will repair your car. If they don't blend the paint and the paint doesn't match, that means they didn't do their fucking job right. If they blend the paint and you pick your car up and look at it and you can't tell where it was painted, what do you think? What is your fucking opinion? So this, this little uh, uh, notation goes out to all the people out there that are going to take their cars to a body shop. If you take it to a professional shop and you trust them, don't tell them how to do their job. You're taking it to them because they know what to do. They know what you want. The first time you tell a body shop owner what to do and how to do it, they don't want to fuck with you. They want you to get your car and get the fuck out. They're the owners of the shop. They're the ones that have been in business for 45 fucking years right here. And I don't need anybody telling me how to do it. Now, I did not blend the hood on this. I'm not going to blend the hood. For the money that she paid me, it, it matches fine. You'll never fucking know. By the angles and the gaps and everything else, the bumper and the... But the door had to be blended. Now, if this was a collision job and I had to paint a bumper and a uh, fender and possibly that hood, then I would have blended into this door and that fender over there. This was a uh, three-day job has turned out to be a seven-day fucking deal. All because the owner telling me what to do and how to do it. I am fed up with it. I was here last, I was all day long last night and everything else. And then today... Uh, let's see, what time is it now? Let's go ahead and show you. This is actually Saturday. Do you see that? Saturday, 8.30. I've been out here since 6 o'clock fucking with this. Winter time. Had to have my heater running for 45 minutes to fucking get the place a little toasty. All because of this bullshit here because the owner's going to tell me how to do it. To all the customers out there that are getting their cars painted and to... To understand and realize that you're taking it to get your car repaired, don't tell the body shop how to do it. Like I said previously, if you took it to that shop, then you trust that shop. You believe that that shop will do the 100 best job that they can do to satisfy you and make that job right. And if they have to blend it, which is 80% of all fucking collision repair paint jobs, 
then they have to blend it. I think I made my point that blending paint is a necessity and it's very necessary for a professional collision repair to be repaired and painted properly. There's very few painters out there in the world that can actually flawlessly mix the paint perfect to match, especially when it comes to pearls, metallics, and, and tri-stage paints. Any and all tri-stage paints, I don't give a fuck what color it is, if it's a tri-stage candy apple paint or a pearl paint, you have to blend it. There is no way you're going to 100% match that. Never. So don't think that you, the customer, knows how to do the car because if you did, you'd be doing it in your garage at home. Let the body shop do their job so they can get the car out of their shop to work on another one and you can get your vehicle with a smile. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, not smiling and not giving a rat fuck because I am not going to be told how to fix a customer's car by the customer. I have learned a lesson for about the 20th time that if I'm going to blend, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to fucking do it. Because that's what the dealerships do. That's what the big body shops do. They're not like my friend Pete that explains in detail every little fucking thing that goes on fixing this to ensure that you the customer is happy and satisfied the only time you ever hear from the big body shop is when you drop your car off and they call you and tell you it's done i got a car to truck to detail out i was only supposed to do a fender it ended up this was a fucking nightmare and that's the way life is i guess sometimes you get nightmares you run into nightmares and you got to live in the nightmare not everything's peaches and cream. And we hope and pray that when the owner comes and gets her car, we ain't got no problems. I'd like to get paid. But I'm to the boiling point that if she is going to be a nitpick customer and this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 and I don't like that, that, get the car off my fucking property. Don't come back. And don't send any of your fucking friends here. Goodbye. <laughs> So that's that. That's a done deal. I hope that you, the customer, you that wants your car painted, you that is taken into a body shop, goes to a professional body shop that knows what they're doing. And please do yourself a favor. Don't tell them how to fix your car. Don't do it. Please. I'm asking you, begging you, drop your car off, let them fix it, and then get, wait for their call to have it done. And that's the end of blending.